Welcome back, boys and girls. It is time for another exciting lesson in God's Word. It's time to get up and praise the Lord. My God is strong. He'll do anything big or small. Nothing is impossible. Look here, on my phone, there's an app for the time. And in there, there's also another feature that is called Stopwatch. Have you ever used it before? Where you're able to time yourself or time somebody doing something. And you wanna see, usually with a stopwatch, you wanna see how fast you can do something. How about listening, boys and girls? How fast are you uh, at listening? Now, if your mom or dad tell you, hey, um, let's get in the car because we're going to go get ice cream. I'm thinking that you're a very fast listener. But if the request is for you to go upstairs and uh, clean your room or uh, watch your little brother or sister or do something else that you really don't like, I'm thinking that you might not be that fast. Well, today we're going to hear a story about a man named Philip who was a fast listener. He was a fast listener in going and helping somebody understand the gospel, understand the good news. Now, more about that in a little bit, but let's take a look at where today's story fits in with our giant timeline. The early church definitely had some struggles. Some members were selfish, like Ananias and Sapphira. Other members were arrested, mistreated, hurt, or even killed because of of their faith. But through it all, God was using the struggles to strengthen and grow the church in all sorts of ways. All of this was done by the Holy Spirit's power. Today, we will learn about a time 
one man led another to Jesus. Our story is called Philip and the Ethiopian. Now watch this video. An angel of the Lord told Philip, a follower of Jesus, to go to a desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. So Philip went. On the road was a man from Ethiopia. He was an important official to the queen of Ethiopia. The man had come to worship in Jerusalem, and now he was on his way home. He sat in his chariot, reading aloud the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot. So Philip ran up to it. Do you understand what you were reading? Philip asked the man. The official replied, how can I unless someone explains it to me? He invited Philip into his chariot and Philip sat with him. The official was reading these words from Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. He was treated unfairly and his life is taken away. The official asked, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? Isaiah was talking about the Messiah. So Philip began to tell the man the good news about Jesus. As they traveled down the road, they came to some water. What would keep me from being baptized? The official asked. Then the official told the chariot to stop. He and Philip went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away. The official continued home and he was very happy. The Ethiopian official knew what the Old Testament prophets said, but he did not understand that they spoke about Jesus. The Holy Spirit led Philip to help the official understand the good news about Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead, just like the Old Testament prophets said. I wish that every opportunity to share Jesus was as easy as our story today. The Holy Spirit really set Philip up, didn't he? God told Philip that a person was looking for him, that, that, that he needed help, and that he was to go to him. And Philip saw him, and he went right to him. And he was able to share with him about the good news. Now, the Ethiopian heard about the Old Testament prophecies, but he didn't understand who Jesus was. And so that's where Philip came in and he was able to explain it to him. And right there in that time, he gave his heart to the Lord. And the Ethiopian said, maybe I need to be baptized right now. So it was Philip's obedience, fast listening, that was able to bring the good news to the Ethiopian. And then in response, the Ethiopian, he received God's word and, and he knew that, that, that he was being changed and, and he was going to follow Jesus and be more like him. And in doing that, he quickly responded saying, I must be baptized now too. And so Philip does that right there and then. He is fast listening. And because he was obedient, he didn't come up with all sorts of excuses or reasons why he can't do it. He just knew that he needed to listen to God and he did it and this person's life was changed. Now, Philip, from this point, he was carried away by the Holy Spirit. Now that's really exciting. Can you imagine, boys and girls? You go and you, you do what God's telling you to do, and then all of a sudden, he carries you away like you were teleported. Now, I can't say that's gonna happen, but I know that things like us sharing the gospel with someone can really make a big impact in their lives, and the lives of the people around them. That's what happened with this Ethiopian. He received Jesus and he went back to Ethiopia and he had the truth of Jesus and he was excited. And so we know that he went and he shared what he had received with all those back where he lived. And see, God was able to use this to be able to spread the good news. And it was because Philip was being obedient. Philip was being a fast listener. See how important it is, boys and girls? 
for us to be able to listen to God and whatever he's telling us to do, to do it quickly? Well, here's our Christ connection. The Holy Spirit led Philip to the Ethiopian. And the Ethiopian knew about the prophecies, but he didn't understand who Jesus was. Philip told him who Jesus was, that Jesus died on the cross and paid the price for all our sins so that we could spend forever with God. And then the Ethiopian received that truth and he gave his heart to the Lord and many other people were told about the good news. Now, in our new unit that we're starting today, we have a brand new big picture question. Why does the church exist? The church exists to glorify God by worshiping him, showing his love, and telling others about Jesus. As we worship God right now, let's ask him to help us live on mission for him so that we will be fast listeners and sharing God's good news wherever we go. Who am I that the highest king would wear? lost but he brought me in oh his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free indeed i'm a child Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place.
We are the church, boys and girls, and God has a mission special for you and for me. And I pray that we are going to be fast listeners. We're going to do what God says and not back away or give excuses of why we can't do it. Let's ask God for that right now as we pray. Father, help us to love you and most of all, obey you with joy. Give us courage to share the gospel boldly with everyone we meet. We need you, Father God. Help us to do this always. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's all we got for today, boys and girls. Now remember, fast listening. Whatever God's telling you to do, go out and do that and share the good news with the world around you. See you next time.